For us to talk about forces and motion, we need to start at the beginning. Sir Isaac Newton was the man to originally define the universal laws of motion in 1687. These laws became the basis of the field known today as mechanics. He was one of the early pioneers of the scientific method, which is still the backbone of the field of science today. He is credited for developing the field of calculus, a branch of mathematics essential to modern engineering. His work with forces in motion was so impactful that the unit for measuring force was named after him, the Newton. A force is defined as a push or a pull. In mechanics, forces usually come from physical contact between two objects. Even fluids, like air or water, still apply forces by direct physical contact. When you feel the force of the wind on your face, you're feeling air molecules pushing against you. There are also several other forces that can happen without physical contact, such as gravity or magnetism. Motion is simple enough. It means the action or process of moving or being moved. Mechanics is the branch of technology dealing with motion and the forces producing motion. In a related branch of mechanics, called kinematics, we study the motion of objects without worrying about the forces that cause the motion. This is useful for designers and engineers as they try to create things that can move in a certain way. Back in 1687, Isaac Newton defined three laws of motion that explain the basics of forces and how things move. These laws apply to all matter in our universe, from an apple falling from a tree to the movements of the planets throughout the solar system. Everything follows Newton's laws of motion. Newton's first law of motion is also called the law of inertia. It states that an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. In other words, if something is still, it will stay still until something else pushes or pulls on it. And if something's moving, it will keep moving in the same direction and at the same speed until something pushes or pulls on it. Objects don't change their state of motion unless an outside force causes it. For example, in 1957, the Soviet Union launched the world's first artificial satellite, Sputnik. Sputnik was a silver ball about two feet in diameter with four long antenna for sending radio signals. As it orbited, it emitted a ping sound that could be heard by tuning your radio to the correct frequency. Every 96 minutes, the ping would return, indicating that Sputnik had completed another orbit of Earth. That little ping was enough to frighten many Americans, who believed Sputnik was put into orbit to spy on the United States. Sputnik wasn't equipped to do any spying, But that little ping taught us some important things. By measuring how much time it took for Sputnik to orbit the Earth, we were able to calculate its speed, which was about 18,000 miles per hour. The other important thing we learned was that Sputnik wasn't slowing down. The rockets that carried Sputnik into orbit got it moving 18,000 miles per hour, and it maintained that speed the entire time it was in space because it followed Newton's first law exactly. An object in motion will stay in motion, unless acted on by an outside force. Out in space, there were no outside forces to slow Sputnik down, as we have here on Earth. Sputnik didn't have to deal with things like air resistance, friction, or gravity, so it continued on its path at the same speed for months, perfectly obeying Newton's first law of motion. Eventually, the tiny pull of Earth's gravity caused Sputnik to fall out of orbit and burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. Here on Earth, we have plenty of outside forces to contend with. Things like gravity, friction, air resistance, and physical obstacles are always working to slow things down. Consider a car driving down the road at 60 miles per hour. At that constant speed, the passengers and the car are traveling at the same rate. If an outside force, such as a barrier, causes the car to stop, the passengers will stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. They continue moving at 60 miles per hour until something stops them. Hopefully, that's the seatbelt. If the passenger isn't wearing a seatbelt, then the next outside force they will encounter will likely be the windshield. And if the windshield doesn't provide enough force to stop the passenger, then they will most likely stop when gravity and friction take over and bring them to a stop. To put it simply, wear your seatbelt.
because of Newton's first law. Newton's first law of motion is also called the law of inertia. Inertia is a property of matter that causes it to resist a change in its state of motion. Matter tends to stay still or stay moving because of inertia. The more inertia an object has, or the greater its mass, the more it will resist a change in motion. So if an ice skater slides across the ice at the same speed as something smaller, say a hockey puck, outside forces like gravity and friction will pull just as hard on both the skater and the puck. However, we can expect the puck to stop moving first, since it has much less inertia than the skater, so it is affected by those outside forces a lot more. When I drop the heavy ball and let it swing back to me, the ball doesn't come all the way back to where it started. It comes close, but it loses a little bit of energy during its swing. Outside forces like gravity and air resistance cause the ball to slow down a little with each swing. If I try the same experiment with the much lighter green ball, the same outside forces act to slow the ball down, but because this ball has much less inertia, the outside forces have a much greater effect on it, and it slows the ball down much more quickly. 